Welcome to the best gravel loop in the West Highlands of Scotland. There's a long stretch of flowing gravel that anyone can ride. A little known hill climb that will take your breath away. Landmarks people come from all over the world to see. This viaduct is the one that is used in all the Harry Potter films by the Hogwarts Express. All held together with quiet roads, many of them single track, following the shores of Lochs. Oh, and we have scenery. We have scenery by the bucket load. This is going to be a good one. I suggest you start here at the rather busy Corran Ferry. Leave your vehicle over on the far side and come over as a foot passenger. It's free for yourself and your bike at the moment. There are ticket machines in place, but they're covered over and they have been that way for a while. So goodness knows if and when they will come into force. But that way you can concentrate on the ride. Leaving the village of Ardgar, we're on 20 miles of quiet single track road. We're following Sustrans Route 78, which comes over here to avoid the busy A82 main road. We'll ride a neat loop with enough interesting bits dotted along its length, and there's a link to it on Komoot in the description. This handy map will explain where the route is. The bit down Loch Shiel here, that is the gravel section that we want to ride. And the roads connect it here and right the way around. So you can do this either way, but the reason I say it's best to start at the Corran Ferry is you've got a nice single track road, quiet going all the way up here, a short bit of busy road, and then you're into the gravel. However, the only other objective thing to know about is here, because you have the Poloch Hill, and that is a monster. It is likely to be the biggest hill you ride. So you could do, do it this way around if you want to get the hill over and done with first, but we're going to do it this way because in normal times it would mean you get two coffee stops. You get a coffee stop at Glen Finnan and one in Strontian. When you're planning this ride, if you're looking at apps like Komoot, you might see suggestions to cut through the mountains. Well, I've done most of those routes and they involve an awful lot of hiker bike actually carrying your bike. So to try to combine those with the long gravel ride down Loch Shiel, I don't know if you could do it in a day. If you did, it would be an utter epic. When the clouds not down, there are great views across to Ben Nevis as you near the village at the head of Loch Linny. This is Camus Nagol, and it's the point where Loch Linny, that's been heading north, does a sharp left-hand turn and merges into Loch Eel. It's the top right-hand corner of our ride, if you will. There's a small ferry here that's part of the Sustrans Route 78, and it offers up a different way of doing this ride. You can just go down the main road to Glenfinnan, do the whole loop, and then take the ferry back from here to Fort William. It would be a lovely end, but you have to time it absolutely perfectly, because there are only five ferries a day, and uh, that's even when there are no COVID restrictions, and none at all on a Sunday. As a backup plan, you could always use the Corran Ferry, but then you'd have to ride up the busy A82, and I think that's potentially dangerous for cyclists. I only use it as a last resort, which is why I suggest starting and finishing at Corran. Cars coming towards you on single track roads are usually fine. Those from behind and all big trucks are worth pulling over for. What makes this route so suited to a gravel bike is that two thirds of it is on a road. Now they are very small single track roads and very quiet ones as well. However, a gravel bike can roll much more efficiently on this stuff than a mountain bike can. Here I'm about to turn onto the road to the Isles that runs between Fort William and Malague, and this is the busiest bit of road we'll use all day, but the sign to Glenfin in there says it's only five miles, so it's a short distance. In summer, this is normally mobbed with tourists and camper vans all heading to Malague to get the ferry. Malague is a very busy place in the summer, and so is this road. 
There is something rather unusual about the land on which this five miles of road is built because this short stretch is the only thing that stops the peninsula of Ardnamurchan being an island. Otherwise, it would be entirely surrounded by water. And millions of years ago, it was. And it was only the, the retreat of the glaciers that took weight off the land that allowed the main part of the land to rise and it all joined up. I think it's called isostatic rebound. Otherwise, I would be living on an island rather than a peninsula. Visitors throng to Glenfinnan. They used to come for the monument to Bonnie Prince Charlie, but see that viaduct in the distance? This is what they travel the world to see. This viaduct is not any old viaduct. This viaduct is the one that is used in all the Harry Potter films by the Hogwarts Express. Closed for COVID, the car park would normally be packed, and this would be the first coffee stop or a nearby converted railway carriage cafe. Instead, we leave on an elegant boardwalk where we'd give way to any walkers, and at the bridge, cross back onto the ancient island of Ardnamurchan Peninsula, although you'd hardly know it. By now, you've ridden 25 miles, and finally, you get what you wanted all along. This is where the gravel starts. I must admit, I do get a bit knocked when writers from outside Scotland describe the Highlands as a wilderness. Wildness, yes, but wilderness, absolutely not. You're conjuring a fantasy from inside your own mind of what you want it to be. I mean, on this ride, we're going to go past two of Scotland's major industries. The first is a fish farm, Norwegian owned, and the third I pass today. Later, it's a timber factory that the ride goes through. Forestry is huge in the highlands. Despite these warning signs, you can ride through. Cyclists have the same right of responsible access as walkers, and this is a historic right of way. Sorry, didn't mean to start you. Okay to come through? Cheers. Just be responsible around machinery and people who are working. Locked gates have been put in because sat-navs were directing visitors along the road. Hence the signs at the end of this gravel section. 16 off-road miles. Back on the road, but I need to have conserved energy because up ahead is a monster hill. If I return to the map I showed you at the start, look down at the elevation profile. It is not kidding. I can see why some people do the ride the other way around to tackle this early. It's just as steep from the other side, but there are more Strava segments on it. I'm not stopping to film the really steep bits, so I'm pretty sure if I did, I wouldn't get started again. The challenge is going fast enough that the midges can't strike. It's only a mile and a half long, but unrelenting with some occasional very steep kicks. It took me almost 30 minutes. Do that. The descent is smooth and sweeping. The sight lines aren't great and you can easily meet a vehicle you haven't spotted on a bend. These are the mines where the element strontium was discovered, taking its name from the village of Strontian, which lies below, and the second cafe stop. You've got a choice, turn left immediately at the bottom of the hill for the Ariundel Centre, or head into the village itself to the cafe there, both currently shut due to COVID. The weather turns as I make my way through Glen Tarbert, there are lots of Tarbots in Scotland. It comes from an old Norse word meaning a place where a boat could be dragged across. Well, I wouldn't fancy it here. For this route, it's just 15 more miles on the road. 
which brings us right back to where we started at the Corran Ferry. A fantastic loop here at Yard Gallery, and if it was open, we could enjoy a nice pint. If you've enjoyed this, perhaps you could give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Doing those two things helps the YouTube algorithm boost this post and, and get the video in front of more eyes. And perhaps you can have a look around, see if there's any more videos that I've done that might tickle your fancy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, bye.